Welcome to our lecture online. Now here is a really interesting problem from the JEE advanced test. And truly this kind of makes you think about how you should try to solve a problem like this. Well, let's read it and go from there. A bob of mass M suspended by a string of length L1 is given a minimum velocity required to complete a full circle in the vertical plane. At the highest point, it collides elastically with another bob of mass m suspended by a string of L2, which is initially at rest. Both strings are massless and inextensible, so they don't stretch. That's what that means. If the second bob after the collision acquires the minimum speed required to complete a full circle in a vertical plane, the ratio of L1 to L2 is, and the number is some integer from 1 to 9. So, I drew a diagram. The diagram doesn't come with the question. Uh, you have to draw it yourself, but just in the interest of time, this is the diagram. We have a, a bob of mass m suspended from a string L1, and it takes on some initial velocity. So let's call that V initial of the first bob. It, it acquires enough velocity so that it makes a complete circle at the top. At that point, it collides with another bob suspended by another string mass L2, and then it goes around and has enough velocity at this point, so let's call this V initial for the second bob, enough velocity to make it to the very top without the string collapsing. Wow, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's take a look at this point right here. And at that point, what you have is you have a bob, you have a bob that has a, what we call centrifugal force pushing it upward, which is equal to mv squared over r and then it has the weight mg pulling it down and in order for the string to stay taut we want mv squared r to be at least as big as mg so you want mv and so now what is this v this is v1 at the top so we'll write it v1t squared uh, divided by r is equal to mg so we'll set it equal because that causes it to be the minimum velocity required. Notice the m cancel out and we end up with v1 at the top squared is equal to r times g. Now what is this r? This r is actually the length of the string so let's replace it by l1 times g or v1 is equal to the square root of l1g. So let's just write it like that. So either one we're going to use one or the other form. Okay, so at that point, what you want to do is you want to use conservation of energy on the way up. You can say that E1 or E initial equals E final for the first bob. So we'll put a little circle, one with a circle around it. So now we're talking about the conservation of energy going from here to here. E initial is going to be one half mv, I wrote as v initial one squared is equal to one half mv1 at the top squared plus the height that it gained so it would be mgh and h is going to be 2l1 so 2mgl1 mgh or 2mgl1 notice the m's cancel out multiply everything by 2 we get v initial for the first bob squared is equal to v uh, at the top of the first bob squared plus 4GL1. And then notice that V1 at the top, or V top 1, squared is equal to L1G, so this can be replaced, this is the top, so this can be replaced by L1G, so we see V initial squared of the first bob is equal to um, L1G, L1G plus 4L1G, which is 5L1G. So that's the velocity squared at the bottom is equal to 5L1G. Nope, this G is a little too small here. It's not a sub subscript. I'll write it like that. Okay, now what happens is there's a collision and energy is conserved. So for energy to be conserved, all the energy of this bob has to go to this bob. So the velocity of this bob here must equal the velocity of that bob there. So what we can say is that V1 at the top 
is equal to V2 initial. The initial velocity of the second bob at the top must equal the velocity of the first bob when it reaches this point right here. Now it's going to go up to the top, and at the very top, we now look at this situation right here. At the very top, we can see that the, um, this is M, this is for bob 2. So we have the MV2 squared, or let me rewrite this a little bit. We have the centrifugal force, F centrifugal force, which is equal to MV squared over R. Now the R is going to be L2, and this is going to be V2 at the top. And then we have the mg going down, and we want the 2 to be equal, so we set mv2 squared at the top, divided by L2 must equal mg, the m's cancel out, and we have v2 squared at the top is equal to gl2. So it looks like we have the same kind of equation here that we have over here for the second bob. Now again, we need to do conservation of energy for a second bob, so we have, this is for bob number two, we have E initial equals E final, so we have a N, one half MV2 initial squared is equal to one half MV final squared plus MGH, MG and the height will be two times L2, the M's cancel out, the same as before, multiply everything by 2, we get V2 initial squared is equal to V final 2 squared, this would be for the second bob, plus 4GL2, and notice that V final 2 squared, V final at the top squared is GL2, so this can be written as V2 initial squared is equal to GL2 plus 4GL2, which is 5GL2. So that's the initial velocity of the second bob at the bottom, which is the same as the initial velocity of the, uh, of the first bob at the top. Hmm. V2 initial of the second bob is 5GL2. And... V2 at the top, okay. V1 at the top uh, is L1G. And V2 initial, so V2 initial, let me circle that because that way, so V2 initial squared is the same as V1 at the top squared, right? Because the velocity of the first bob here is equal to the velocity of the second bob initially. So V1 at the top squared must equal V2 at the bottom squared, the initial velocity squared. So we can replace those two, so we can say then that L1G is equal to 5GL2, the G's cancel out, and so now we have L1 divided by L2 is equal to 5. So the length of the first string must be 5 times the length of the second string, and so the answer needs to be an integer from 1 to 9, and so therefore the answer is Five. The ratio of the lengths of string 1 to string 2 is 5 to 1. So a quick review of what we just did. It's kind of like a four-step process. The first thing we do is realize when the bob comes to the top, the centrifugal force, that fictitious centripetal force that pushes upward, has to outdo the mg, the weight of the bob coming down. If, if this is bigger than this, the string will collapse. To keep the string taut, that has to be at least as big as this, so we set it equal, we solve for V1 at the top being L1G, or the V1 at the top squared being L1G. Then we use the conservation of energy to express the initial velocity in terms of 5L1G. Then we come up here, we do the same thing for the second bob, realizing that the velocity of this bob must be equal to the velocity of this bob after the collision, so now the bob goes up, we do the same thing over here. We look at the top here, and we realize that the centrifugal force pushing up must at least be as big as mg coming down. So we solve for v2 squared at the top, which is gl2, just like over here was gl1. Here we have gl2. And then we use conservation of energy. We realize that v2 initial cannot be written as 
5 GL2. We realize that V2 initial is the same as V1 at the top. And so therefore we can replace V2 initial squared by V1 at the top squared, which is L1G. And L1G is equal to 5 L2G. G's cancel out. Ratio is equal to 5. And that's the process in which we can show what the ratio is of those strings. Quite a problem. Can you think of the method to solve that and solve it all in three minutes? That would be a challenge. I took longer than three minutes to figure it out. So that is how it's done. That's quite a problem.